Sun Bonani, Dumelang, Abshini, Demadequa, Na. I go by the name of Mastermind, and this is the third edition of On the Grind. The third edition of On the Grind, a bit late today. Uh, but our guest is already here waiting for us as you all know every day we speak to hustlers you know that's why we're doing it at 12 because hustlers don't sleep hustlers don't sleep we had a fire fire episode yesterday with an incredible creative um we got a channel on youtube she's amazing man we had an amazing conversation you can check it out you can check it out here on 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 on, on IG Live TV. Just check it out. Uh, the lighting's a bit bad today. It's killing me today. The lighting. Nazo, Nazo, Nazo. I hope you learn today. Um, earlier on, uh, we 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 premiered a new. Simply say a new show or new series here on, 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 on Instagram um, called Friday Drive. We featured uh, the amazing man, uh, the amazing DJ Switch. <sighs> he dropped a lot of knowledge, dropped a lot of knowledge and learned a lot as well. Um, our guest is already here. Today's guest, I've known him for, for like 10 years or so. He's been in in the entertainment industry, for, I think for for like ten as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's from he's my homeboy. He's from Limpopo. Uh, but I met him in in the Val. Uh, we'll find out more about him uh, uh, um, when we chat to him. He's a philanthropist. He's a producer. He's a director. He is. He is an artist manager as well. We want to find out where it all began. I mean, from Limpopo uh, to the Val. We want to know all of that to join us. Uh, Matabo, he's already here. He's already here. His name is Matabo Matecha. Limpopo's finest. He's already here. Let's see. What happened? Oh, no, man. Connection. There we go. Don't I am. Sean, don't I, don't I, Ah, grand Tiaga. Yeah, man. Thank you for honoring the invite, man. It's, it's, it's not easy, man, to stay up until 12. Ah, man, you know, man, ah, you always up at 12. <laughs> always out at the gig. I've <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. Yes. Oh, and thank you yeah. for having me. It's a pleasure, man. It's a pleasure. Uh, it's not just going to be a Q and A. Q&A. Um, and just find out where it all began. I mean, who's Matabo? Uh, who are your parents, man? And which 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 township are you coming from? Well, Matabo is a guy from Limpopo, Polokwane, mm -hmm. uh, Teflon yeah. in particular. Uh, mm. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm the fourth child of my parents, uh, which yeah. I uh, I lost my father in 2011, uh, okay. but my mom, my mom is still alive. Yeah, man, I'm yeah. from I'm I'm just a a gassy boy, you know, but now what's it? Yeah. Now you're from a gassy boy. What kind of a child were you at school? Were you those quiet okay. guys or? Yeah, what kind of, what kind of a, a student were you at school, to say? 
Well, I I can say I was I was a bit of both. Yeah, I was quiet, ah. I was loud, but more experiential. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I I love <laughs> experimenting things. I did almost everything. Uh, yeah. In my high school days, I used to play all the sports except for hockey. So I played all sports mm-hmm. codes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So which one did you excel in in terms of 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 sporting code that you're playing at school? Uh I was good in soccer. I was very good. I I was good in soccer, volleyball and basketball. Yeah, those were the ones that I I used to excel much on. Yeah. So when you get when you got to grade 10, What did you want to do after matric? I mean, you, you you spoke about sport being one of the things that you excelled in. Uh, did you want to do sport, or there was something else in terms of career? Well, uh, I can't say what what I wanted was to to become a businessman. I always wanted to mm. run my own businesses. Uh, sports, yes. sporting was just uh, extra mural activities, just to keep fit, and all those things. So mm-hmm. I want, but then I want, I, yes. I, I wanted to be in business more than anything. So did you have that conversation with your parents? And as we all know, our parents are always preaching that we must finish matric, get a job. Did you have that conversation with your parents? And what did they say to you? Well, I <laughs> to tell you the honest truth, uh, azang, 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 and uh, I never did. Uh, I never had that conversation ever. So I just mm. completed my matric and feathered on, went to Val, started marketing, where yes. we met. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah, I never had that conversation with my parents. So. So you you just spoke you just touched on Val. Now it's now you finishing up the trick. You're starting marketing. You you spoke about you having that phase of of owning your own business. Where did marketing come in for you to decide to go to Val? I mean, from Val from Limpopo to the Val, that's another distance as well. Why did you decide to go that far to study marketing? Well, um, the reason why I went to Val is because my brother. My brother went to the Val. Mm. He studied. He studied at at the Val. So I kind of uh, like uh, had interest. I kind of like had interest on going to the Val, looking at my brother coming there, how he is, how he's achieving things, blah blah. So I had interest mm. in going to the Val, and then. But when I went there, I wanted to study IT because I. Yeah. Uh, I was a bit more fascinated by the the computers, so I thought maybe I'll start a business with computers. So so if I can have a bit of knowledge of IT, and then marketing was my second choice because yes. uh, I like being on the streets, man. I like being on the street hustling. So you know, with your marketing, I very very. It's just business. Everything is business. You sell everything that you see, my guy. Yeah. So b- before we dive right straight into the marketing, the val, and and your life changing when you get to the val. Now, what did you do, Jola? And what did your your your, your parents <laughs> think of you starting to tell? We can't go all serious, man. We need to know. What did you do, Jola? <laughs> uh you know <laughs> no but then uh you know uh ukjola uh, when was it uh sometime back in the days man uh but then it wasn't that deep uh but i think late in the late late years of my high school days yeah i think so you were late yeah. bloomer until and something like that something like that dog <laughs> <laughs> and and the person that you were dating was that your first 
Yeah. It was he, she the one that broke, that broke your virginity. It has to say. <laughs> Too much info. I see kids on here. So kids are not sleeping here, man. <laughs> <laughs> so we can simply say she was your first now you get to the vow uh you enroll in marketing right now your life changed in the vow you want to share that change with, with us your life changed completely when you got to the vow yeah it, it it's changed it's changed actually it changed mm. a lot a lot because mm. i started seeing things from a different perspective you know from yes. a, a boy from limpopo then yes. going into outing that on its own you you you'd notice change but then also yes. meeting new people meeting all kinds of you know meeting people from all over the country all over the continent mm. So you 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 start to learn new things. Yeah, well, totally. that's when my yeah. came. Yeah. Wow. We met I think in 20 how much mistaken it was in 2010 or 2011, I'm not sure. No, 2010 I think, yeah. 2010. And and you came to me I think I think if I remember correctly you said to me Hey man, I'd I'd love to I love I'd love to speak to you about uh the industry. I'd like to learn more about the industry. Why did you decide to do that? I mean, I was a stranger to you at that time. Why did you decide to to just say, "Okay, cool. Let me just go and speak to this guy." You know, um those were the days when I was at uh uh working with corrections, you remember? So yes. I I I was eager to know more obviously looking at you the time you were with uh, the Soweto's finest um mm. the, the work that you guys were doing um mm. and then you know there's Nabo Tom Nabo Brown I I yes. usually to I I I always told them that you know guys I want to meet your manager every time mm. was I remember the times where they would come and then when I was busy somewhere else we couldn't meet at that time so when you when we, when you came that's when i mm. said to myself you know uh leave out what tom na what kg na one man uh let me just go straight to the guy and then approach him as a marketer always you know <laughs> you you know how to approach people you yeah, well, so yeah just to know the industry Well, because I had Nabusi for you remember Sipongo was here uh, at the time yeah, yeah. still uh, bringing up the soil so yeah those were the guys Libo na Libo Tolore I approached Sipo I personally I, just like how I did on you I did the same with mm. Sipo I, I went straight to him and said guy look uh, I see you doing good in the industry mm. because I fell in love with the entertainment industry honestly speaking So yes I I I I I I told myself you know what if you see a person doing good approach that person tell him what you want and then you never know what mm. comes out I mean like look at now uh from those days approaching you guys um I I gained a lot you know I've learned I've learned a lot uh and then from from working with Soeros Finance as well uh i've gained much a lot of experience i grew corrections as well you know so that helped a lot wow yeah what 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 have you learned from me personally uh from that day? what is that one thing that you say i took from that day uh, being humble humble mm. and yeah humble mm. yourself mm. you know a patient amazing yeah mm. you got if you're in this industry if you want to be the long haul in terms of the industry you got to be humble you got to be down to earth you got to be patient as well you know um yeah. but it's about you today it's about you and people want to know about you now 
you managed to learn all of that. And after correction, you went back to Limpopo. The idea of studying Catholic, Catholic Kings, where did it come from? Well, before, before, before leaving the Vala, I worked with uh, Undisputed, remember? Uh, yes, I yes, yes. Umati, Umati. Yes. So, uh, I also, when coming to Limpopo, uh, coming back to Limpopo, I had that thing, you know, um, I went out to Gauteng, went there and learned new things, which Limpopo, by the way, is still a, a, an, an undeveloped province, if I may say. Mm. Yeah, well, so people this side do not know of the opportunities which are there in their eyes. So I thought, Hore, got the skill that I have, and the knowledge that I've, a bit of knowledge that I gained that side, let me share it amongst the guys around Limpopo. So at first, I was just yes. assisting people in, 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 in getting into uh, the industry itself. Yeah, well, mm. So then me assisting them, hooking them up, getting them gigs, uh, helping them in terms of their music, mastering their music, and all those things. And then that there was a thing that came to my mind and said, you know what? Um, why don't you uh, start something that you left in Houghton? And yeah. then I remember I had a conversation in no no Yeah. Yeah. man, you can't leave the industry because at the time when I came back to Limpopo, I got a job inside. Yeah, well, yeah. So me doing a job, but then I still had that thing for the industry to say, man, uh, you can't leave the industry. And everyone used to, say, even yourself, I remember you once said to me, you can't leave the industry. Yeah, well, so I tried mm. not to. So that's when we came about uh, the Kasi Kings. But then before it became Kasi Kings, it was Divine Dance Crew. Mm. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. It, started, it started off as a dance crew and then during the process it started we started developing and learning new things uh, you know the industry itself when you're in the industry you, you need to learn how to adapt adapt and change because the industry changes every day so, yeah, well, so, true, so yeah. from, mm. from divine crew, that's when we went to Kasi Kings and then also uh, there was there was a guy who came to me and said, Hormona, when are you doing good in the industry? Everything that you yes. touched on, it came out a uh, message. So why don't you open a label? Yeah, well, so I then decided to, to open my own record label, which does uh, artist mm -hmm. management, uh, music, uh, music business, uh, public relations, marketing for artists, and all those things, yeah, well, yes. uh, real music. So that's when I, I, I decided, well, you know what, let me start this thing and then see where it goes. And then by then, so far, before, it's we, get, good. before we get to real launch and music, um, you spoke about uh, Gatsby Kings and uh, uh, how it all became in divine. Before it was uh, Gatsby Kings, it was divine. There were about four guys, if I'm not mistaken, or five, and now there's two. What happened? What made us leave? Did you guys have uh, some kind of uh, differences in terms of the growth of the crew? Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. It was not necessarily differences. Uh, mm. It was a matter of um, adventuring into or venturing into new things. Or when the guys came. We were five. There were five. The guys were five at the, at the first time. And then the other guy had to move yes. from Limpopo to Free State. And then yes. we were left with yeah, one. And then, you know, at the time they were still young. When they grow, mm. uh, they develop into stages where lowering, they have to move. Uh, they have the, the the commitments that they engage themselves in. They they start to be more commitments. So they came and said, "Oh, you know, we are more committed uh, in a lot of things now. 
we just need to yes. try and prioritize our our things so we moving into the other things and then i i i had to release them you know so we released them there was no fights there were no any any miscommunication there was no conflict of some sort there was nothing yes and then immediately when those guys left i don't know how many months after they left you guys went all the way to win an award did you <laughs> I, 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 I'm just thinking on how those, those guys felt because you guys went to even a what, and you guys started gigging like nobody's business. Um, yeah. In terms of getting into music, because because I think that's that's where you guys started separating because you guys went to into music now. So it's no longer about dancing alone. The the thing in terms of going into music, what was going through you guys' mind, and what was the plan behind that? You know um the reason why we we went into music uh, it was simply because mm-hmm. um we were regarded as the best in school in the province yeah mm-hmm. which we worked with so many so many artists who are in the mainstream of the industry nationwide yeah so there was a time yeah. when we when I had uh, I had a conversation with uh, with uh, Usis with Mashaba she said to mm-hmm. me that uh, you guys are good i've seen you a couple of times and you guys are good but then mm-hmm. why are you not dancing to your own sound your own music just create beats mm-hmm. create beats mm-hmm. and then dance to your own beats because when you dance to other people's music you are you are somehow promoting those people and those people they are not creating yeah. you in any way yeah well, so that's when mm-hmm. the idea of going into music came in and then we sat down and said but we can't do we can't just do beats alone let's just try putting vocals on the beats and then we tried putting vocals on the beats um we did something that nobody was expecting and then the first yeah. track that we produced and published out that is that was the first track that won us the first award yeah well, so amazing man so, amazing man from there we, we never wanted to look back we said hore you know what yeah. uh, we are we are in the right in the right path this is the way that we are moving and then gigs gigs started flowing in we were gigging like nobody's yeah. business all over the the, the province uh, and mm. all in other provinces we went to mpumalanga we were frequenting in mpumalanga we were frequenting in gauteng we were frequenting in northwest uh, and also in mm. In all corners of the Limpopo province. So that's when we saw oh, this thing is ours. Let's go in. Let's go in deep. Yeah, well, so yeah. Oh, man. And, then, and, and, and speaking of gigs, sorry to cut you there. And speaking of gigs, we're going to go into the monetary factor. How much do you guys charge and how do you distribute the cash? Because it's three that, well, it is you, management, and then the two guys. at our stage actually now we are not three uh, there's more there's more guys obviously behind. now yes 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 yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Well, but how the way we distribute mm. money uh, we have a contract we have contracts which were distributed to everyone who is part of the project and then the contract stipulates for him, how much will you be getting and we don't distribute mm. obviously we not getting money immediately after getting a gig and say okay oh, this is how much this is the much uh, this is what we made so let's okay. split okay. so yeah. it's just like when you're working for a company the company works when works and mm-hmm. works and works and then you know the, the man that's when you get to get your 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 stipend get your salary not necessarily yeah. a salary but you get a stipend you know so yeah pretty much yeah Mm. and then charging um it depends on 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 the on the kind of event that we are attending yeah uh how much time do you need us to be there the distance let's just say the yeah. let's just say about puka puka you know someone wants you to come and dance and sing at the wedding at their wedding how much do you charge 
like I'm saying, we look, we look at those aspects oh, no. where distance, yeah, well, so I can't really say now that mm. we're changing this much. This is our rate because uh, we look at distance. If we have to get accommodation, if it's far, yeah, well, and all those things. This is just in here. What says? That's how we determine the price. Yeah. Let's just say, Kotev, you guys don't have to move anywhere. Né? You are around, and it's just for, let me say, 30 minutes. How much do you guys charge? <laughs> Trying to sell you on here. I have to. I have to. <laughs> it ranges, man. Uh, for, for like 30 minutes, it will be somewhere close to my 2.5. Somewhere yeah. around there. I mean, Kiko Kass, you know? Because Kiko Kass. Because even if you put me on the spot. And also the name, the, na the name, uh, the brand that comes in. You know what? Yeah. Because Kass Kings and yeah. Alocha, they are big brands in the province. So, you know, they, yeah. they also hold water. I had to put you on the spot, man, because I know for a fact uh, how much we used to charge at Toyota's Finance. So, I wanted to find out how much you guys are charging. <laughs> At the time, we're charging about plus minus 10,000. It depends on the, on obviously, as you said, on transportation, accommodation, and all of those things. Oh. You know. So, right now, the brand is grown. Or the brand is growing in the process. Are you, do you want to include more members into uh, Catholic King? Well, uh, I wouldn't say yes, because um, Catholic King so far it has achieved a lot on its own. Yeah, well, so we, we, we wouldn't want to take yeah. with the winning team. Well, instead, mm. instead mm. We, we want to sign more artists which uh, will be led by Kasi Kings. Kasi Kings will be paving way for those artists. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't want to add more members to Kasi Kings. Because yes. so far, the winning formula for Kasi Kings. What if people come, you know, you never know the intentions of people. Someone would come to Kasi Kings looking at the fact that, no, Kasi Kings is winning awards nowadays. Kasi Kings is getting recognition everywhere. Kasi Kings is appearing on TV and all those things. Yeah, well, they would come in, yeah. they would want to come in for wrong reasons, and then they would come in to destroy mm. it. They didn't want to destroy the winning formula. Yeah, man. And now we just spoke about the winning formula and, and everything. Um, right now, you guys are not gigging. Pretty much 90% of artists are not gigging, uh, unless if you are gigging online, there's something that you're doing online, and then you're getting something out of that. How much has the lockdown affected you guys financially? So it has affected us extremely bad. Extremely bad. Yes. Because I remember uh, when the, the president uh, announced the lockdown, we had about four gigs lined up. We had about four gigs lined up already and we were just waiting for the payment. They were confirmed. We got confirmation letters and all those things. And then two of them, I think, they were due to pay the, the next morning before uh, the president announced that uh, the state of mm. the The guys had to cancel and already on our side we had made arrangements we had uh, prepared for those gigs. You understand? So it has it has hit yeah. us. Uh, it has hit us very hard. Yeah, but, <laughs> so yeah, I, we, we 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 really suffering from this lockdown, and also. But then, yeah. it's not only us. It's the industry, the entertainment industry is very, mm -hmm. it's hard. Yeah, it, it, it's hard. So yeah. It's not good, my guy. Yeah, man. It's sad to hear that, man. Um, did you apply for the for the relief fund in terms of artists? As, as they said, uh, we must apply. 
and 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 did you get a response in terms of that we applied but then uh so far we didn't get the response and also but then uh in the pro- we applied the one the national one yeah uh, we didn't get a positive re- we didn't get a response let me not say a positive response at all. but we did not get a response at all and then in the province the mc of sports arts and culture has has announced yesterday that uh there will be there will be uh, assisting artists and then artists need to apply so we, are all, we, we yeah. also um, did an application today hoping for for yes. for a response so the applications opened today so already we made applications so hoping to get a response what what about response It's great that you 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 mentioned that. However, what do you think the Department of Arts and Culture could have done for artists at this stage? I mean, this is this is day what? Is it fifty-five? Fifty? I don't know. I stop counting myself, man. Exactly, man. Exactly. Yeah. Well, um, I think what they should have done, like. they should have gotten uh, all the artists and some, somehow this uh, this funding things because also the criteria that they are using the things that they need some some of those things i i i i i i i i had a meeting today also with this other guy from some organization that represents artists so mm. speaking with the speaking to the criteria and the things that they need in order for artists to qualify and ni- i can guarantee you that 90% of the artists they are not going to qualify it's it seems like they don't want to give artists those money and uh, hence they make they uh, the criteria the criteria so difficult because the things that they need there is the things that they never told artists to have before yeah one so what they should have what they should do they, they should just give those uh, artists money they should just come up mm. with, i don't know mm. they should come up with a way of funding artists because majority of the artists that's how they put bread on the table with uh, with uh, the gigs and everything that's how we make a living exactly you know, it's exactly you don't have uh, uh, life for us yeah man because i i'm also thinking if if i didn't have an extra uh income that i have which is my company that does something different as well i don't think i would have survived uh, until until now you understand because i'm also an artist myself this voice over work that i do uh, uh there's also uh, script writing that i do on the side as well that has affected me because i already had three gigs lined up i've got proof of those gigs i applied myself but there's no response I'm tired of speaking about the arts and culture, the Department of Arts and Culture. They have a new spokesperson who, who, who's not doing anything, not saying anything to us as artists. I mean, you are from Limpopo. The NEC just just said something today. How about all of those days? They were quiet. There's money that is there, and apparently Arthur received that money. You understand? We are all affected in this country with this thing. I'm tired of that. I'm tired of fighting for the food parcels as well. Now, going forward, uh now that we have realized that as artists you are on your own. What 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 plans are you guys making as real lotcha music? Well, obviously we're trying to uh come up with ways of um having some sort of investments for the artists when we we we're yes. also going to have an option for for saving money the money that we'll be making um there's going to be a portion which is going to be saved uh for our artists yes. all the artists in the uh, in the in the real nature music so yeah well, so that's what we are going to do so far for now for yes. now but then we'll also come up i think we we never had meetings also we're still going to meet and yeah. evaluate how did this thing hit us and then how how can we best resolve the issues 
uh, going forward if it happens again. Wow. Because, yeah, it, it, it's gonna not, it, it might not be COVID-19, but something else is still going to come. And, 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 and yeah. so this is just a, it, there's been things coming now and then, but the, this is just because this is locked down. However, there's more that's still going to come, you know, and I think we better be ready. We better start doing those plans in terms of saving up for the artists and, and having other streams of income, you know, that are going to come in so that the artists can be able to leave, you know. Now, going back to you uh, as, as, as the manager, as director, you wear so many hats, man. Um, how, how, how do you manage to do all of this and manage to be a brother and manage to be a father on top of that? Well, it's not easy, man, because you're dealing with different characters. You yes. understand? So, but then, like we said in the beginning, that uh, you should humble yourself every time. In every situation, you must know that you are a different person. Uh, there, there are yes. situations where you are a father, there are situations where you are a brother, there are situations where you are a manager, there are situations where you are an advisor. Now, what, so if you humble yourself, mm. if you listen to, if you attend to issues with patience and understanding, that's when you, you, you'll mm. be able to be, you'll be able to perform all your duties properly. Yeah, well, so mm. that's how, that's, so far that's what I'm doing because I'm attending issues. Uh, you should always be neutral. That's, that's how you should be. Mm. But then also putting the fact that it's business at, at the end of the day. Mpana, in closing, what can you say to someone like Kasi, especially Teflop, and who says, na, upila waka usedili, you know, I mean, artists, mtekizama, mtekizama ukenya keimi, kia kwa lea, you know, mama kia kwa kwa lea, what can you say to someone like that? Well, you know, what I can say to artists, not, not only the guy who's saying, uh, Kefedile and whatnot. Uh, but what I can yeah. say is that artist needs to make artist needs to make needs to make a research uh, on how to get into the industry and how to maintain the industry. That is number one. Yes. Number one. Because artists are lazy to, to to research, but then they are quick to to complain. I understand if yes. you find what when you complain. I mean, like look at Cassie Kings. Cassie King's first track, they won an award. In, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the award was uh, in the, the Limpopo Music Awards. And those are the biggest yes. awards in the province. In Limpopo, uh, yeah. Competing with yeah. a lot of big name artists. Yeah, well, so mm. uh, it was through research that made us to be part of those awards and win them at the end of the day. Yeah, well, and then, by yeah. the way, we won them two times, right? two times, two, two years mm -hmm. in consecutive. Yeah, man. Thank you. So, yeah. Yeah. Do your research and then know the industry. Study yeah. the industry. You must mm. uh, research. Don't be ignorant. Uh, approach mm. people. Approach people that you see doing good. Don't be afraid and say, oh, no, how do you pay that? You bet hey, it's too quiet. That guy, maybe he's arrogant and not not. You'll never know until mm. you try. Eh? So you must try. Yeah. You must knock on those doors. If those doors they are not opening, kick those doors, man. Kick those doors until they open. If you if you're good, and also you also need to produce good music. Eh? If you are, mm. you are if you are your work must be good. It must be proper because. Some artists like complaining, but then when you go back, if you come and say, okay, fine, let's help you. What is it that we can do? Let's see your music. You find out the music is not well mastered. The, the music is not well mm. mixed. It's not well produced as well. And then you start complaining and say, our music is not playing on radio. Hey, we don't getting anything. And also, PR, man. Artists must get PR. Very important. You can't, you can't, very, very important. Very important. Very, very important. You can't be on stage and be on off stage at the same time. So if you're on mm. stage, someone must be on the ground doing work for you. You can't be in studio and also be in a boardroom meeting. 
You understand? Mm. Be in studio and let mm. someone go to the boardroom meeting. So those are, those yeah. are the things and the things that most artists make. We have one, and yeah. they must also take out the 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 the, 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 the this thing that they have that uh, labels are not good for artists. Uh, you need to go independent. Yes, you need to go independent, but then for a start when you are still developing your brand let people who know the how part of how to be, to make you a brand do the work for you and then when you when you when you then become a brand that's when you can go independent i mean like if you look in if you look at the industry in the country as well as far as i know with the research that i have made there is no artist not even one that made it independently honestly i mean like you, you speak of black coffee Uh, DJ Blackoff is from a label. You speak of uh, DJ Tira, who's a re- who's a label owner. He's he's he also has a manager. He also has a PR manager. You understand? So if those big names and big brands, they are ma- they are still having those things. Uh, they are still signed under labels. Who what who who are you as a, a young up and coming? Who mm. uh, 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 someone who? approaches you or when now you you wouldn't want you wouldn't want to approach someone to help you so they should get managers they should get pr even if if you can get your friend or your 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 friend as your manager or as your pr it's still fine at mm. least someone is doing yeah. something and also come and combine two heads at the end of the day and say or well, look and one and how can we move forward if <laughs> while 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 I'm at studio when I can you go to this radio station and submit my music go to this meeting and mm-hmm. speak to people on my behalf for what mm-hmm. so get those things and pr is important artists must get pr and also they must get quality pictures their their their, their uh, material must be must must be of quality because if mm-hmm. like taking taking photos as an artist you can't take photos with pictures and send to promoters uh, you can take mm, photos no. with phone and send to promoters yeah what mm. so you need to you need to go to photo shoots get professional photo photographs and have profiles mm. your uh, you must you, you must document your work your work must be mm. documented everything that you do yes and also take 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 yourself as, as a business If you are an artist you must know you are a business you are a working business because you are in the business mm. of selling time so who's going to mm. waste their time listening to you if you are not organized we are one and two <laughs> so invest in those things invest time invest money in those things get people to help you approach people and then you will make it the industry it's, it's simple to break through but if you're not doing things the right way you won't break through wow brother man you've said a mouthful man you you've shared a lot of knowledge um for someone that started as well the way that you started man i'm super proud of you uh from the person that you were in 2010 to the brother that you are right now i'm super proud of you i think i've told you this a couple of times I look at you and I look at your work and I'm like wow is this the guy that I spoke to in 2010 you've done quite well for yourself man you've done quite well for yourself I'm proud of you I'm proud of what the guys uh, have done and I will honor the invite um of coming and speaking to the guys just to share my knowledge as well I'll come definitely uh we've been saying for years we've been saying I should come through I'll come through Um I would like to say to you just an advice going forward as well uh what are the brand even more take care of the brand the brand will take care of you uh whatever that you do whether it's the text whether it's the status whether it's um hello outside your house outside the the, the event venue it goes back to the brand each and every little detail that you do it goes back to the brand watch your mouth watch your step watch whoever that is around you take care of the brand i'll say it again take care of the brand and i can't stress this much humility humility 
will take you far, my brother. I'm super proud of you, and thank you for joining me, man. No, Antoine, thank you for having me as well, um, and thank you for the people who are watching. Uh, I see my woman is there. I see my brother. Oh, you you family, man. Yeah. Your family that supports you. You're very blessed, man. You're very, very blessed. Man. You're very lucky as well. You have a family that supports yeah. you. They stayed up. They stayed up. Not easy. Yeah, I see a lot of yeah, friends. Mm. I see a lot of friends, yeah. Uh, so yeah, man. Big up. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you for the for the support, mm. the continuous support yeah. as well. Active sport. Um, these guys, they are joined. Uh, one of one of the 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 the, the uh, event organizers, uh, the the venue 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 owners, is also watching as yeah. well. Uh, exclusive sport. Wow. Um, wow. So. So I think he's the one that was looking for the parents. Yeah? Yeah, man. I think he's one of those that were looking for the prize. But how much do you guys charge? <laughs> yeah, he didn't comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then they know, yeah, how, they know the prize. Man. They know the prize. <laughs> man. Yeah. Man, man, continue to yeah. do what you're doing. Don't stop at all. Continue to do what you're doing, man. I'm super proud of you. Thank you for joining us. We'll be at part two and part three of this. We're still going to come to Limpopo. I'll be there. I'm coming very soon after the lockdown. I'm trying to get a permit to, walk, to, to go around. I should be able to get it next week. Just to go around and be able to do all of these interviews. Uh, uh, some of them face to face. As long as we are in a distance. You know, we're at a distance a bit. So, man... I, 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 can, I cannot stop saying this. I'm super proud of you, man. Be, continue being the person that you are, man. I'm sure Limpopo is proud of you. I'm sure your dad is proud of you. Ah, your mom, obviously, she is proud of you, of the guy that you've become, man. And take care of all those artists and continue being proud of them. You know, continue telling them that you're proud of them, man, and nature them to be the greatest brand that South Africa needs right now. Thank you, Mpana. Thank you, Mpana. So sure, we can end, man. Now we can end. Moja. To everyone that joined us, thank you very much for staying up.
Dark Magazine.